All right, so it's your boy Cash Cup Productions. I'm live with K Lyric. What's up? Go ahead, talk your shit. What's up with it? It's your girl K Lyric, man. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, I am, I am underscore K L Y R I C. Got a mixtape out right now, Where My Journey Lies. Check that shit out on that Piff right now. Y'all check me out, man. All right, so what's up? Welcome to the show. So for those who don't know you, just go ahead and just give them a little background, a little background about you. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, real name, Kaylin. Um, I grew up mostly on the east side, Summer City. Uh, played ball all my life, all the way up until my junior year in, uh, in college. And then I decided, like, man, this shit ain't for me no more. And then I decided, Hey, I always been writing notes, I always been writing music and shit, so let me do this. So that's why I am where I'm at tonight, today. Mm -hmm. And talk, uh, talk about coming up before that, like like growing up, like how was it for you, life on the east side? Um, it was cool, like, it was straight. I picked up rapping off of just at the lunch table, just, you know, playing beats with your pen and shit. Everybody live, you just start rapping, free, freestyling and shit like that. And um, shit, I enjoyed my childhood. I had a good ass childhood. Like, was music something you were always trying to pursue, or it was just something on the side you was doing? Um, for the most part, it was something on the side I was just doing. Um, my main focus was basketball all the way up into college, and then I decided my junior year in college, like, I think I want to try music. See how that shit go. Mm -hmm. So basketball, how was that working for you? It was good. It was good, man. I um. Shit, we went to state twice. Uh, I went to Wagner High School. Shout out to the T Birds. Um, in college, I made all of, all American honorable mention. Uh, my freshman year, got to go to Florida and shit. So like, ain't like basketball was like going downhill for me. It just like it, it had more to do about depression, to be honest. And, depression? Yeah. Okay. Can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah. So um, I would. As I was playing ball, I would be, you know, just get more depressed throughout the years. And then I realized, like, music was an emotional outlet for me. Like, that's how, I, that's how, you know, came about music. I would be writing about how I feel, what's going on in my life, you know what I'm saying, and making it a song. And um, basketball, like, was always my main focus because that was my, my childhood dream. But I would always do music on the side. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what did it take for you to push basketball to the side and say, you know, I want to go full-fledged on the music shit? Um, this might sound crazy, but my first bad year playing college ball, I uh, played at Glenville State College, and I just didn't feel like the coach was utilizing me, like, you know how I wanted her to, man. Uh, our team was cold as fuck. Like, our team was cold. Never lost a home game, but it just like, that chemistry wasn't there. It was like, you know what I'm saying? I just start, something inside of me just start getting unhappy. So I just was like, this ain't it, you know? It was, it was years going, building up to that. So I'd be like, man, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm getting tired of this shit. I'm, I'm tired of waking up at six, having to run these fucking miles. Yeah. When a motherfucker get in trouble, I'm tired of getting on the line for the ass. Like, it's it, a lot of build up. Yeah, how'd you explain that to everybody around you? Because I know, you know, family and everything, they was probably disappointed. Yeah. You know, some people, not they not gonna understand. They, they still don't from. understand, yeah. man. So but it ain't you, about them. It's yeah. not about them. We all got our own lives to live. It's about me and me feeling happy in myself and then uh, projecting that outward to become better, you know what I'm saying? To become something else that I feel like I could become, that I have trust and passion in, and that's music. Mm -hmm. So transitioning over to the music, when you first started coming out, like what what was the whole process of you dropping your first song? Um, really, my first process was just like, shit, I need something out that somebody could listen to. Like, let me just put something out. Um, I started recording in college, um, and then I, I just took it from there, just putting shit on SoundCloud just to have shit to people to listen to, and then uh, Don't Play With Me, that's my first single I officially released, and I you know, went through the whole BMI registration, sound that's exchange, yeah, 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 some um, shit like that. All right, so what was the feedback like, you know, you first started dropping your song, sharing it to your friends and shit, what was the feedback like? They fucked with it. Um, I actually, while I was going to Texas State, the year after I decided to quit ball, 
um, I'll still like, okay, let me still try to go to college, you know what I'm saying? But I was still depressed as fuck, you know what I'm saying? Um, trying to find my purpose and shit. But um, I actually went out to a few open mics in Houston and shit just to see, you know what I'm saying? Can I make music my life? Like, can I actually do this shit? Can I stand on my own? Cause I'm so used to being with a team, you know what I'm saying? Basketball is all about team. Can I kind of turn we into I? And I felt like I can. So that's where that go from. All right, now coming coming back to San Antonio, like how'd you go about getting your music heard around here? Were you doing shows? Um, yeah, you? I did. So I did a few open mics, um, and I also I did the um, Who Wants to Make It competition uh, to get a chance to perform at the BT Awards. Um, I did that, and shit, really just me working at the liquor store, get a lot of customers coming in, regulars and shit and just pushing my shit like that at work. Is there anybody in your family that's affiliated with music? Like any rappers or singers, musicians in the family? Any mm. musical talent? Nah. So like the first one? Yeah. Okay. I got a cousin right now that's in Atlanta. Um, he kind of like modeling slash singing, but uh, I think he more focused on modeling right now. But mm. shit, he younger than me. But other than that, like, I don't have no musical influence from family. Were there any obstacles you had to face? Cause I know, I know at one point in time, you feel like you gotta give up. You know, it's one thing that makes you feel like you gotta give up. You did it with basketball. Mm -hmm. So with music, was there a point in time where you felt like you, were, you wanted to give up? Um, nah, once I quit basketball, I said, I can't quit again. Mm -hmm. So this is what I chose. So I'm gonna have to stick with this shit. Mm -hmm. For so the long it's haul, no, no it's just way. it's just music. No other way, man. That's what's up. That's what's no up. other way. So, as an artist, like, who did you come up listening to that plays a part in your music today? Um, shit, Lil Wayne, um, Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj plays a big part. She's a big influence. Her, her and Wayne, uh, Drake, um, J Cole. That's about it. Mm hmm. So, since you listen to the, uh, you probably write all your music, right? Yeah, I do. I do. Okay. All right. If you ever paid for a feature and you wrote the song, like, and you wrote the song, say you paid Lil Wayne for a feature mm -hmm. and you wrote the song, would you care if he freestyled it or would you rather him write the song? Nah, I don't care. He could freestyle that shit. Lil Wayne could freestyle. Okay. He could freestyle. What about like any other rapper? Would they? Would you be all right with them freestyling it? Or if you pay for somebody's work, you you rather them sit there, write, and you know? Uh, see, my favorite, my top artist. Nah, man. Like J Cole, uh, Kendrick. Them some niggas that can freestyle. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I ain't tripping. They could do their thing. But as far as other artists, yeah, I'd rather them. It. Yeah, they gotta come with it. All right. Would you feel like disrespected if they just came punching in and shit? While she not if the shit was hard. Time. Not if I like it. Yeah, I not if I like it. But if I don't like that shit, I'm like, what the fuck you doing? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> All right. So you don't have any visuals out right now. Why is that? Um. Yeah, man, just between like me working two jobs, um, it's kind of hard. Um, I actually did, got, I have one video that I had made for my mixtape to the um, Spiritual War, to the Drake War remix. Um, I had did that a few weeks ago. I'm gonna release more uh, visuals when it comes time for me to drop the mixtape on the first. Right. And I'm gonna have visuals for my EP for sure. All right, so. I mean, what could we expect coming from this EP? Like, when could we expect it to come out? Oh man, so far I'm gonna put five songs on there. Um, my EP is gonna be, it's gonna be a reflection of me, like a total reflection of me of like, how I think my pers my perspective in life, you know what I'm saying? Um, really emotional out there like I came, like, like I told you about at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Will we see any features? Cause there were there weren't any features on the first project. So yeah, you will. I'm actually mm -hmm. working on the, um, a joint project with my homegirl Jazz Vani. Um, right. Yeah, we working on some shit. We working on some shit. All right. So there's a handful of female rappers in the city. Are you familiar with any? Nah, I'm really not. No? All right. So I gotta ask you, like, what do you think you're bringing to the table that's gonna help you stand out from everybody else as far as female rappers? Um. I think for one, just me being, just me being a lesbian, like, kind of separates that. 
And then two, how I rap. Like I don't know um, how I put it. You know, on the sex talk type shit that most that yeah a lot of yeah yeah artists are like you actually rap. Yeah, yeah yeah, and actually talk about something. You know what I'm saying? Not all about sexual like, content and shit like that. Even though I do do that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's talk about your first project, where my journey lies. Like, what was the inspiration behind that? Um. A lot of it is me just feeling like if I have, if I'm an artist and, and this is what I'm going to do, I have to have something under my belt. You know what I'm saying? Like something for people to listen to. So my first motive behind um, releasing the mixtape was just to have something that people could listen to more than just one song. Because all I had was Don't Play With Me out since last year and that's the only thing I had out for people to go listen to. So I was like, okay, I, got, I need something else. I'm an artist, like I gotta have something else for people to listen to and be like, okay, and like she really can rap. So besides that, uh, my grandma, uh, she had died last July, and uh, I took that real hard, and I was already, you know, on my music route, but when she had died, that gave me like, that was like the fire under my ass that told me like, okay, I gotta come harder. So me and my grandma, both the motives behind that. Mm -hmm. And after you dropped it, looking back at all the numbers and shit, are you satisfied with what it came out to? Did yeah. it exceed your expectations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fucking with it so far. So far, so good. Um, oh, it's released on that path on the 15th, so it just been out about a week or so. But I'm gonna release it on every other platform on the 1st of July. That's my grandma's birthday. All right, that's what's up. All right, so it's a lot of talent in the city, and I feel like it's a lot of artists out here that don't really push themselves. So, like, what's your views on people who have talent, but they're part-time rapping? Like, they got talent, but they're not really pushing themselves. They're not trying to get themselves to the next level. Man. I mean, that's a personal choice. I mean, I really ain't got shit to say about that. Yeah, but, but say, like, say, like, I'm your friend, you know, I got talent, I'm rapping and shit but I don't do anything off of it. You know, we get together, every time we get together, we freestyle and shit, but it don't ever go that far. Yeah, like, yeah. like how, how would you feel about that? Like, would you? Shit, get you a mic and start recording that shit. You record that shit yourself, and then you can send it off, find somebody, send that shit off to an engineer that know what he doing, and start like that. All right. So, other than making music, like, what else do you like to do? Other than music, basketball? Yeah. Uh, shit, that's the main things, man. Smoke. I smoke like a motherfucker chimney. <laughs> you have any hidden talents? Like, uh, I don't know, do you sing on the side, low key? Uh, yeah, I low key sing a little bit on the side. Um, I used to play percussion, uh, the drums, the snare. Are you looking to dibble and dabble in different types of genres of music? Like jazz, not jazz, but I'm just throwing shit out there. Uh, like pop, yeah, pop and shit like that. And uh, yeah, man, like um, if I make it, um, I want to be mainstream. I don't just want to be, you know, what I'm saying the underground rapper. Like you hear all that shit, but you don't see them nowhere. Like I want to be able to hit any genre, you know what I'm saying? Like Nicki Minaj does, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I want to be able to be seen on a big scale, on a global scale, not just local, you know. Right. And going back to that first project, you know, at, looking back at it, like, what do you think you need to improve on as far as, like, as an artist? Um, I would say my lit side. My lit side. Um, I'm so serious all the time. <laughs> like, I, and I'm actually getting to the part because I'm happier in life now that I could create um, more upbeat music, you know what I'm saying, versus always being in your feelings and always talking about how somebody done you wrong or whatever, you know what I'm saying, I could not worry about, look back on my past and be sad now, like I actually could live my life to the fullest and be happy, so y'all be getting more upbeat lit music from me in the future, for sure. Mm -hmm. So how else are you coming for the rest of the year, like 2020, how else you come, how you plan to set the tone? Um, shit, man, push this mixtape, and then my EP is gonna be released on my birthday, September the 13th. Um, have a release party, shit, and take it from there. Take it from there. And with like a lot of the venues opening back up, are you looking to go back into doing shows and shit? Or? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I'm for sure get out, do some open mics, book some shows if I can. Shit. 
did the virus going on fuck up any anything you had any plans you had going like were you going to south by southwest or anything nah 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 i wasn't i wasn't um that but that competition i told you about the uh, who wants to make it mm -hmm. um that actually went on during corona but they still held it at the austin airport okay yeah how was that i mean that's pretty weird at oh that, that was straight yeah. um was it like some parking lot shit no, it was inside. It was like a hotel linked to, it was some weird shit, but it was tight. Um, they also had a um, Black Ink Crew, Atlanta. They had a dude from uh, Hosted, so that was cool. And I got to talk to him, and that was straight. Looking at the music scene in the city, do you feel like you can make it in the city, or do you feel like you need to branch out to like Houston, Dallas, in order to make it yeah. in the city? Um, I honestly feel like I need to branch out. Like, I really want to be the rapper who is homegrown, you know what I'm saying? But for some reason, I keep feeling the need to leave. I don't I don't know why. Like, it's, it's weird. You just feel like it's not enough attention on the music in the city? Yeah, exactly, exactly. We don't have enough of a music platform in San Antonio, you know what I'm saying? Not for hip-hop, I don't feel. Uh -huh. All right. So what's next for you? Like, what's, what's it going to take for you to get to the next level? What are you trying to do? Um, engage more, um, get my fan base up. I think that's a major part, you know, since I'm just now coming out with a mixtape and only have one single. Um, networking, networking is a major thing for me this year, so. All right, and where could we contact you at? Um, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, I am underscore K L Y R I C. You can hit me up on my uh, my email, k.lyric1733 at gmail. Contact me on the phone. Shit, if you hit me up. <laughs> that money wave. I'm here with K.lyric. How you doing today? Shit, so tell me more about your clothing line. Like, what's it called? Oh, yeah, so it's called Sang. Um, and it stands for She Always Needs God. Okay. Um, it, but the... Regular name was Euterpe, which is, she is uh, one of the nine muses of uh, Greek mythology. She was the muse of uh, poetic po uh, poems, lyrical poem, all that shit like that. So I was like, oh, that's cool, you know what I'm saying? Let me do that. But um, back to the depression thing, I had, I had took another trip to Lower Ridge and um, me and God had some talks, so uh, <laughs> I had changed, decided to change the name of my brand to Sane, and stands for She Always Need God. Okay, and your depression, like, what what did it take for you to get out of that mindset and move forward? Um, being more grateful in the moment um, for what I do have, and really music helped me out a lot you know what i'm saying because this is something i do have control over is my music you know i may i might not can control everything else on the outside world but i can control my thinking how i feel and my music so that's what's up so you were big playing sports but that was also causing a little bit of your anxiety slash depression yeah. so what is your advice to somebody that wants to pursue basketball but might be going through something similar that you're going through? Yeah, um, try to get school counseling if, if that helps. Um, if you need medicine, shit, take it. Um, but also, ain't no medicine greater than, you know what I'm saying, prayer. And um, uh, find your support system. You know what I'm saying? Rather if it's friends, family, because you always can find somebody to talk to. You might, it might not feel like that when you're depressed, but there's always somebody you could talk to who will understand you and help you feel better. You know what I'm saying? Okay, that's legit. Yeah. All right, so now tell us about your project. What was the, well, you, you kind of tell us your grandma and your, uh, you were the kind of the inspiration behind it, but what was your recording process like? Like, how'd you come up with the songs? Was it like random ideas or was it something that you was really trying to push to get out? Um, well, for my, I knew I had to have leave once, at least one song dedicated to my grandma. Um, and I thought, what better remix than Crossroads? You know what I'm saying? Um, because I'm at a point right now, it's about to be a year since she passed in July 30th. Um, but it's like, I have 
did a total turn. Um, I was always a physical being, now I'm more on the spiritual side. So it's like I'm still learning this, but the, inten the intensity is strong, you know what I'm saying? It's like I still feel her presence, I know. She died in her sleep. I didn't get to see her the next, I thought I would get to see her the next day, but that day never came, you know what I'm saying? Right. So that fucked me up hard. And um, it, it's, it helped spiritually wake me, I tell you that. <laughs> What, what what kind of person was your grandma like? What kind of role she play in your life? Um, my grandma, she's always, we lived together almost all our life. Me, my grandma, my mom, my sister. Um, she's always been there. Um, she said I was the apple of her eye, like I meant a lot to her, you know? And that, that was my first death um, close to the family like that. So that, that took a toll on me. All right. Now, um, you got your you got your project out. What's the number one single off of this? Um, my favorite is "Close to the Grave," and I, I fuck with "Close to the Grave," so that's number eleven on the song list. And I also fuck with that uh, "Who Fooling K," not "Fooling K" lyric, the "Who You Fooling" by Gunna. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's my favorite too. <laughs> All right, and what's what's your next move? Like, you got any more projects coming up after this? Um, yeah, um, I have my EP going, that I'm gonna release on my birthday, September 13th. That's on a Sunday, um, and I'm working with a I'm working on a joint project with my homegirl Jazz Vani, but we don't have a release date on that yet. 